Our lesson this week continues on the thought of faith, leaning on, trusting in the Lord, being obedient to his instructions, his word. We are going to follow two spies that are sent from Joshua across the Jordan into the promised land to scout out the well-fortified city, Jericho. This is going to be a lesson that will call to our remembrance when Moses sent the 12 spies over into the promised land to scout it out. We're going to see a major difference here this weekend, our Sunday school lesson between the times of when Moses sent his spies into the promised land and when Joshua sent his two spies into the promised land. And it opens there in the third verse with word sent from the king of Jericho to Rahab, calling on her to bring out the two men that had entered into her house because they had come into Jericho to spy on the people of the city. So how did the king know about the two spies? How did the king know that the two spies went to the house of Rahab? In the opening verses of this chapter, the first and the second verse, which is outside of our Sunday school lesson for this week, We'll see that some must have saw the two spies go to lodge at Rahab's house and they went and they told the king this information. They were not wrong. The spies, they did go to Rahab's house to lodge there. So the question would be, well, why did the spies go to Rahab's house? Well, as spies, it would have made logical sense for them to go to a place where soldiers would go and lodge themselves. So it would be logical for the spies to go over into Rahab's house to, to scout, to spy out the opposition where the soldiers would have been at. So something that I do love here that scripture does not hide is the fact that again, Rahab is a harlot. What I love most about this is that there are many people because of the color of your skin, the way that your hair looks, or the profession that you may uh, have, they will think and say, they will determine that you can or cannot be saved. And Rahab is a woman because she's a harlot that many people will say she couldn't be used by the Lord. She could not be saved. But we see here in scripture today that God can and God will use anybody that he desires to use. And that's what I love so much about Rahab's story. Yes, she was a harlot, but we'll see here something very special about her today. We'll see that there is a reason why the Lord decided, why the Lord chose to use her. So we'll see that Rahab hid the two spies and said to those that had been sent to her house that at one point the men were there, but when it was getting dark and the gates were about to shut, they left. She claimed to have not known which direction they went in, and she encouraged those that were looking for the two men uh, to pursue the two men. So she lied. Now the question that I believe many of us would ask is, well, why did she lie? If you think about this for a moment, why would she lie to protect two spies who were a threat to her home? She was someone that was from Jericho. These two men were from the outside. She didn't even know these two men. So why would she protect them? That is, I think, a really good question here for Rahab. We'll dive into that answer in just a moment. However, you'll see there in the sixth and in the seventh verse that she hid the two spies on the roof out of the sight of those that had come for them. And we'll see that the pursuers, they went out and we'll see that they chased after ghosts. I say ghosts because the two spies, they certainly worn out there, right? And so the question is still remains, right? Why is Rahab, why is she protecting these two spies from those who are of her home? These two spies who, again, they pose a great threat, a great danger to her home. Why is she protecting them? The answer is revealed to us in the next couple of verses. Rahab, 
She spoke to the two spies and we'll see that she said, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint hearted because of you. So she gives them some valuable information, right? But something that I really want to point out about this verse is that Rahab, she knows the Lord. And even on top of that point, Rahab, she knows that God had given to them Israel. She knows that God had given to them the land. How does Rahab know the Lord? And how does Rahab know that God has given them the land? In the verses that our Sunday school books skip over here, uh, for example, the 10th and 11th verse, I want to take these verses here because we'll see that what the children of Israel was doing before they crossed the Jordan had reached the ears of those who were in Jericho. We'll see there that Rahab, she speaks about how she had heard about God parting the Red Sea and the children of Israel crossed on dry ground. That would have been years and years and years ago. We have to remember that the children of Israel, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. That happened after uh, the children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea on dry ground. We'll see there that Rahab, she, she also speaks about how uh, she had heard about how Israel had already defeated other kings like the Amorites. So the children of Israel, their, their accomplishments had made it to the ears of those who were in Jericho and those who were in Jericho they were very afraid of Israel. They were very afraid of their God as well. So Rahab, she knew the power of the Lord. She knew the power of God and Rahab did not want to be destroyed. Now for all of us today as believers, her knowing the power of God and her desiring not to be destroyed by the Lord, that should be ringing all kinds of bells in our head. And not for a bad reason, but for a good reason because it connects us with her. You see, we say today as the children of God, we say that we are God-fearing believers, right? What do you think about Rahab being a God-fearing believer? She certainly fears the power of the Lord and she does not want to be destroyed by him. We as God-fearing believers, we know what God is able, we know what he's capable of doing, especially to those who are wicked to those who are disobedient. We know that the Lord will judge the sinner and we know that God's judgment of the sinner isn't going to be a kind one. And so we, knowing that we are sinners, we do our very best not to live as the sinner, right? We do our very best to be obedient to his instructions. We do our very best to be obedient to his word. Why do we do that? Because we don't want to be destroyed. And so we believe in our obedience that Due to our faith in the Lord, we will not perish, we will be saved, we will have everlasting life. Guess what Rahab is going for here? She's a God-fearing woman, and again, this is a harlot, right? But she's a God-fearing woman that does not want to be destroyed. And so we'll see here as we continue on in our lesson for today that Rahab is performing an action of kindness. She wants to find favor in the children of the Lord at that time in their eyes. She wants to find favor in God's eyes so that she can be saved from destruction. Rahab was a God fearing woman. So again, there in scripture that is outside of our Sunday school book for today. We'll see that that Rahab asked them to swear by God to spare her and her family as she has shown them kindness to which we'll see that the spies they agreed to do for her and for her family. And so this is where our Sunday school book, it now picks up there in the 15th and the 16th verse with, with Rahab now helping the two spies escape from her home, which actually sat on the wall of Jericho, we're told there. And then we'll see that Rahab, she gave them directions to follow outside of the wall so that they could be able to return back to their home, which was again across the Jordan River. So that's the last that we see of Rahab in our Sunday school lesson this week. But again, Rahab, she's a very fascinating woman. Uh, she again, I love the fact that scripture does not hide that she was a harlot. It does not hide her profession at that time, right? 
And again, what's even more fascinating along those same lines is the fact that Rahab was a God-fearing woman. She was a woman of faith. She didn't see the Red Sea part. She didn't see the army of Israel defeating those kings, but she still believed. She was a woman that did not walk with the children of Israel, right? She was a woman that lived across the Jordan as far away as she could from the children of Israel, yet she believed faith is faith without sight, right? But many of us today, we say, man, if only I was there, if only I was there to see the Red Sea part, if only I was there to see the miracles of Jesus, we say, I will believe. We say, if only I was there to, to hear Jesus teach, if only I was there, I would believe. But again, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Rahab was a woman of true faith. She believed without seeing. Again, her just hearing about what God was doing, it was enough for her to fear the Lord and desire to be obedient, to do kindness, right? To, to again, be saved from destruction. What is holding you back? What is keeping you from having faith in the Lord? Our lesson, it closes out on a note of two spies heeding Rahab's direction and returning back to Joshua across the Jordan. We'll see that their return to Joshua was much different than the spies that went out for Moses. Out of the 12 spies that Moses sent out, only Joshua and Caleb had returned back with a good report. Ten of the spies, they return back with an awful report. But here, both the spies Joshua had sent out, they came back to him saying, truly the Lord has delivered all the land into our hands. So they went into the land, not knowing the land, right? They went into a foreign land that, according to the 10 spies that had went into the land prior to them, well back into the time of Moses, 10 of the 12 spies. Again, their report was so negative. It was such a, a bad land, a scary place, right? But these two spies, they go over into the land, they carry with them their faith, and they saw what God would do for them. They ended up in a situation that could have been dire, but God, he had sent them to a woman. He had sent them to Rahab, who gave them some valuable information, who helped them out in the end, right? And they were able to return back home. So these two spies, they knew what God was able to do. They saw what God did for them, and they believed that they would have the victory. That is what faith does, right? So our lesson, it boils down again to simply trusting in the Lord, having faith. When you have faith, you will enjoy success. When you have faith, you will be blessed by the Lord. When you are of faith, you are going to be highly favored in God's eyes. So that's what you, you should carry with you from our lesson here this week. Have faith. When you have faith, you will be blessed. Thank you.